Whew. Oh, wow. Alright. Where's everybody? Say what? Guys, where are you? I need your help. Oh. Hey, gang. Are you guys looking to buy your first canoe? If you are, you may as well just chuck your money in the garbage unless you are fully aware of these four super, super important things which I'm going to tell you about right now. Now. Hey everyone, you guys looking to buy your first canoe? Well listen, you may as well just chuck your money in the garbage can. Hey everyone, you guys looking to buy your first can... Hey everyone, you guys looking to buy your first canoe? If you are, you may as well just chuck... Oh, those are not gunshots, by the way. Welcome to wine country. Those are called bird bangers. They're big guns that sit out in the field where the grapes grow in the vineyard to scare birds away from eating the grapes. <sighs> All right, so the first thing you need to consider when you're thinking about buying a canoe is, what do you need it for? Is it for flat water uh, tripping on an open lake somewhere? Or is it white water canoeing down a rocky river? Or is it just for kicking around the cottage with the kids or uh, you know, maybe you want to stand up in it and you're fishing or you're uh, maybe even hunting. Uh, those canoes that are best for the job are very, very different. And if you buy the wrong canoe, trust me, you will be sorry because most canoes are very, very purpose specific. All right, so I said there's going to be four things that you need to know. All right, so here they are. We'll talk about them in a bit. We're talking uh, hull shape. All right, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, the rocker of your boat, which if you don't know what I'm talking about, you don't know what I'm talking about. I'll explain. There's the length of the boat, which is really important. And then there's the material. What is it made out of? Okay, those are all super important things. Okay, so you could use this canoe for just about anything you want. And just so you know, any canoe can be used for any purpose. But as I mentioned, if you uh, use a purpose or use a canoe for something that it's not intended for specifically, you're just going to be at a real disadvantage. And in fact, you could put yourself into some real danger if you get uh, use the wrong canoe in the wrong situation, uh, like a tippy canoe on a big open water and you're not, you're not used to it, then yeah, you could be in some real trouble. So it's really important to get the right canoe for the right job. All right. So are you looking to have a recreational canoe? Oh, by the way, by the way, there's about 20 different things you can use a canoe for uh, that people do on a regular basis, maybe even more. But I'm going to focus on three things that most people are really into. Now, remember, there are dozens, if not hundreds of variables and things I can talk about um, uh, specific to, to the canoe you'll want. Like, for example, do you want a solo canoe? Do you need a tandem canoe? Do you need more than two people in the canoe? Do you need five people in the canoe? Um, who's going to be carrying it? Um, you know, there, there, I could I could sit here and lecture you for like 20 minutes or probably an hour. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to focus on three things. I'm going to focus on three things that most people use canoes for. Number one is just recreation around the cottage. Number two is white water canoeing. And number three would be flat water lake wilderness tripping. All right, so here we go. If you just want one for kicking around the cottage, um, just for recreation, like maybe, you know, the kids are gonna hack around on it, uh, or you might be using it for fishing. What you want is um, something that's in the neighborhood of about 14 to 16 feet, easy to handle. Uh, you'll want it to be pretty wide, and you want it to have a flat bottom, all right? So before we get too much into that, I just wanna, sh <laughs> you gotta know this. I forgot to tell you this, you gotta know this too. There's something called initial stability and there's something called secondary stability. And that has to do with that. When you sit in a canoe and you start rocking a little bit, 
does it feel kind of stable? Well, if your canoe has a flat bottom, it will feel pretty stable. If your canoe does not, if it's kind of a rounded hull, it's not gonna feel stable at all. You're gonna be going like, whoa. Okay, that happens all the time to my kids. I'm telling you that those two qualities are super important in any canoe you choose because for every advantage you have, there's a disadvantage like anything in life. So if you get a canoe that has a flat bottom, that's great. It has initial stability and it's fun to just kind of hack around and you can stand up in it. Um, the kids can, can walk around in it practically and there's no problem. The problem is it has what is called initial stability, which means by inference that it does not have good secondary stability. All right, secondary stability means when you bring the canoe over about this much, secondary stability means that it's not just gonna go flip right over. But if your canoe has a flat bottom and you bring it over like this, it's just gonna pretty much go over the rest of the way really easily. And if you don't know that, you can be in some real, real trouble. All right, so you'll want to consider that when you buy a canoe. Is it gonna be a flat hull? Is it gonna be a rounded hull? All right, Initial, the, the rounded hull has secondary stability, meaning it's harder to tip it over once you get over on it a little bit. Um, initial stability means it's easier to flip it over when you get over, but it's harder to get over because it's so stable at first. All right, I hope you're following me. I think you are, we're good with that. <laughs> All right, so if you want a recreational canoe, um, you'll want a 14 to 16 foot long canoe, which is a good all around average canoe for uh, sort of recreational use. Now, the longer a canoe is, the more efficient it is. By efficiency, I mean, you're not always yutzing with it. You're not like trying to correct it and steer it all the time. Your, um, your power per stroke will move you further through the water. That's what you want in many cases. That's the important thing. It's called efficiency. But not everyone makes efficiency a priority. For example, when you're going down a river, you don't really care how fast you go for each forward stroke. That's not your initial, your, your biggest concern. Your biggest concern is safety, maneuverability, for example. There's a few other things. So, so if, you, uh, if, you're, if you want a canoe for the cottage, you're just looking for um, something that has initial stability, so flat bottom hull and about 14 to 16 feet long is good enough. Also, what is it made out of? Well, that's the, that will affect the price in a huge way. Ultralight Kevlar canoes are gonna cost you many thousands of dollars, but a cheap little fiberglass canoe or, or even a, a lesser expensive aluminum canoe is gonna be your least expensive, and that's now we're talking hundreds of dollars. So it's quite a big difference. So uh, as far as the material you choose, I, I wouldn't go for a high performance Kevlar in a flat bottomed recreational canoe. There's no point, all right? It's, it really is just a waste of money. So you can get something, just a fiberglass um, uh, hull material for your recreational canoe. If you want something for whitewater rapids and you are um, you know, looking for river canoeing, you will definitely want something made out of a more sturdy material. You want to read up all about it. Uh, something like Royal X is one type of a material. Uh, perhaps aluminum, although that's got its problems. If you wrap aluminum around a rock, you're going to be in trouble because it's not going to bounce back. Um, so there are materials that are made specifically for whitewater boats. They are not light. You're not going to be carrying this boat on your shoulders, are you? You better not because <laughs> you'll have a hard time. Canoes for white water also have something that's called an extreme rocker. Now, I haven't talked to you about what rocker is. You got to know this too. Rocker is from one point of your canoe to the other. Does it kind of go like this? Is there a bow in it? Or does it kind of, the shape of your canoe along the top, is it straight-ish? If it bows like this a lot, this one kind of does have you can tell it's got some rocker. It goes down and then it goes up towards the, the back there. If it has a lot of rocker, it's perfect for maneuvering. That's what you want in white water. When there's two, especially if there's two people in the, well, either way, one or two people, doesn't matter. Um, you can steer it a lot better if it has lots of rocker. However, if it has lots of rocker and you are in a lake uh, with wind blowing, you're gonna have a problem because the wind is gonna steer you and you're gonna be constantly fighting 
your, uh, with a corrective stroke to keep the canoe going straight. It's going to go this way and then this way and this way and this way. What you want in that case, if you're on a big lake, you want something with almost no rocker. That way it'll track through the water a whole lot better than something with uh, a rocker. So you see there's huge advantages and disadvantages to each quality, characteristic quality on a canoe. The other thing you want to consider is um, if you're doing uh, lake water tripping, it probably means you're going to be doing some portaging. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I would never personally, I'm an old guy, right? So personally, I would never buy a canoe that's not ultralight Kevlar. Ultralight Kevlar, I can lift up a 17 foot canoe over my head. So speaking of length, here I'm jumping around, but hey, just stick with me. You'll get all the info you need eventually. Um, lake water canoes, you'll want long, longer is better. All right, so you want something 17, 18 feet, maybe even longer if it's for more than two people. That will keep your canoe tracking straight. It will, uh, it will hold a lot of capacity and it will be very efficient. All right, that's important. So if you're uh, back to white water, you don't need a canoe that long. 16, maybe up to 18 feet um, will, will do the trick. The problem with a ultralight Kevlar is it costs a lot of money. It's the maximum you can pay for a canoe and it's not as durable as all the other materials. So you got to be really careful. You don't want it smashing up against rocks. Uh, you got to be really careful when you are landing the canoe uh, on the shoreline. Uh, keep it away from waves and rocks. Uh, so you do have to, 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 to give it some, some tender loving care sometimes. All right. So again, there's positives and negatives. On the other hand, when you're, when you're canoeing on uh, uh, whitewater rivers, you've got uh, Royal X, which is a great material. There are other materials that are meant just for uh, whitewater canoeing. And your canoe can literally smash into a rock and it'll kind of buckle and then it'll bounce back. That's what it's meant to do. It's wonderful. But try picking that thing up over your head and carrying it. You will not want to do that. Trust me. If you haven't tried it, you don't even want to bother. I mean, we're talking canoes well over 100 pounds, where my 17-foot Kevlar Ultralight is 35. So, uh, you know, there's no competition there, but it's durable, all right? So you see, again, I've, I'm, I'm drilling it into your head. There's positives and there are negatives to just about every quality you can get in a canoe. All right, so those are just some of the types of canoes uh, or activities that you'll want to consider uh, getting a specific canoe for. So whitewater canoeing in the rivers, uh, flat water, lake tripping, um, or just uh, casual um, recreation canoeing around the cottage. There are so many other things that I can talk to you about, folks. I'm telling you, there are, there, I, I grew up canoeing, so there's just like, I'm getting confused just thinking about all the things I can talk to you about. Um, but you know what? You will want to stick around here. Here's a secret. Please, 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 please do not leave YouTube. All right. Now, down below in the description, there will be a link to our website, sportconsumer.com, which does outline all kinds of factors you want to consider before you buy your first canoe. All right. I just did a, a few little things here just to kind of keep you entertained. But, but if you leave, I'm telling you, YouTube does not like it when people leave YouTube. All right. There's a secret. I know the algorithm. So don't take off. Just take note of the address. Go uh, at some point. But for now, check out some of the other videos that we've got. And uh, what YouTube wants is for you to like binge on my content. All right. I wouldn't mind that either. But, you know, we all have uh, a certain amount of hours in the day. So I'm not going to steal all of yours. But if you want to hang around for a bit, check out some of my other videos. I'm going to be doing this a lot for a lot of different products. I'm not an expert in everything, but what I am is a researcher. And if you go to sportconsumer.com, at some point you'll see there are 300 sports that I deal with and over 3,000 products that I and my team review. And so to that end, I'm a little bit of an expert in just about every sport you can imagine. All right. So today was all about canoeing, but we're going to we're going to attack a whole pile of other sports very soon. If you like what's going on here and if you don't think I'm too much of a pain in the butt to watch, you can subscribe. That would be excellent. And you can give us a like. We appreciate that. And I look forward to talking to you guys next time about another sport. Thanks for joining me.
All right, so this view is actually um, not very stable uh, in, ter in terms of its initial stability. All right, so I'm going to give it a, a, a try here and see how this works in terms of uh, its initial stability. So this is not very stable. That's kind of scary, all right? So, however, these types of boats that have uh, a poor initial stability usually have a pretty good secondary stability. So let's see. Whoa! Well, it's actually not too bad. Let's see. Let's see how it's Whoa! <laughs> well, that's horrible! Turn the camera off! I didn't even talk about this, but most canoes, like this one, as you can see, when it's full of water, it's still not sinking. And uh, it's, it's got flotation at the very front, the very back, um, uh, built in. So most canoes do, so you don't, you don't have to worry about it, so I'm not even going to talk about it, but you can see it in real life. Here we go. All right, in three, two, one. Ah!